Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, being a part of our first technical uh, webinar. Today I will talk about some basic protocols working with MEO system. This will also include a couple of basic techniques that will help you evolve and get comfortable using the system in no time. First, I will start with explaining the complete color <clears throat> overview in detail, then we will continue with the rest, okay? <clears throat> so we have, what, more than 18 colors now, uh, but we will start off with the opaque colors. It's a very conventional color, uh, if you could imagine, with compared to all the other systems out there. It's opaque. Um, it's a very strong color. We have, now it gets a little bit more interesting into half uh, semi-translucent colors. Uh, which is two halos, uh, we differentiate it from uh, age difference, spring being younger, autumn being older. And then we got the high translucent colors. These colors are really, really unique. Um, th there's an intensity of color, but also adds that translucency that we need on any kind of monolithic restorations, okay? So next we got the new translucent colors. Um, it's a very, very nice. Uh, I, it, it just proves me time to time every time use, I use these colors. Okay, so first, before I get into any technical stuff, um, I would like to talk about how you should manage and mix uh, the new jars properly. <clears throat> So we'll see, we'll watch a little quick video here. So I think one of the most important things here when you open a brand new bottle, you want to uh, completely eliminate the foil on the rim of the bottle. Um, there was couple, several times I found some of the particles inside the material, so I'll try to eliminate uh, a lot of that, or uh, all of that. <clears throat> So this mixture, uh, do not throw away the liquid that gets puddled on top. Um, the consistency is, uh, we actually measured the consistency so that it works the most uh, proper and the most optimal way. Uh, just mix very thoroughly and get the uh, correct consistency overall with not including, not, not just the in-sync glaze paste, but all the rest of the colors that's in the system. Okay. <clears throat> so with Mio, what you see before the bake is really what you get after it's fired. So please uh, do not add any extra liquid to any of these bottles. Uh, once you start to thin out the material, it's, it's really when you start to, um, when it starts to really affect the fired outcome. So leave the consistency the way it is, okay? Okay, that's uh, the protocols for the new bottles. And I wanted to address about surface tension on uh, your parts, your zirconia parts or your lithium desilicate parts. Um, there will be a video here. I want you guys to take a real good look at uh, how the surface reacts to liquid uh, in the beginning. So the, <clears throat> the best way is to really uh, treat the surface properly uh, there's many ways to do it. As you can see on the right, it, the, the liquid puddles like oil and water, and we don't want that. This will cause uh, splitting in color with, after it's fired or pulling away from the part. And you can see the correct uh, surface uh, treatment on the left side. To treat the surface correctly, there's uh, different ways to do it. Um, I personally refrain from sandblasting due to uh, damaging and weakening the, the strength of the part itself. So uh, we could talk about uh, how we address the surface tension at the end of uh, the presentation, but um, I just wanted to give you guys the visuals to see uh, what is correct and what is not, okay? <clears throat> so, Matching the shade caps, um, we want to address uh, 
the very basic ways to uh, master shade tabs by increasing the chroma, and there will be another video coming to go opposite way and brighten the color. So here is using translucent shade A. Uh, here is the part that I started off with. The zirconia is a multi-layer A1 imagined zirconia. And this is uh, a A1, which was the target shade that I'm looking for. And you could clearly see that uh, the color and the value seems a little bit different. So once the surface is treated properly, I, I will put a thin layer of glaze paste, and this will be a one-shot technique to achieve the target shade that I'm looking for. Okay, and the target shade that I'm going to go for is going to be an A2, not an A1. So if you want an A1, then we could just glaze this just how it is now, and we could fire it. But I just wanted to show you uh, the application method on creating a different color or brightening effect or, or giving a, a higher chroma for, for this uh, example will be a higher chroma using the translucent shade A, okay? And there's a there's the importance of uh, looking at evaluating the shade with the shade tab being on the left side and then the right side. There's a, there's a nuance to that. And, and that nuance is when you look at it on the left, it looks slightly different and compared to the right. So you want to constantly see in different angles and to make sure that your final target shade is what you're actually getting and, and what you're actually seeing. Because the beauty of Neo system, really what you see before the firing is really what you're gonna get after. So you could see the method of application is a little bit different than the conventional way. So the conventional way is more on the thinner side, using the uh, thinner side and making a thin color application because of uh, the unwanted texture dip at the end of uh, all the monolithic uh, restorations and all other systems out there right now. But as you can see, I'm applying it more like an opaque. So the key here, if you could take a look at the brush tip, my brush tip is not actually physically touching the zirconia. It's skimming on top of it. So I'm just literally letting go the, the, the color that's on top of, uh, on, um, on the tip of my brush. Okay, so, and it's very easy to move around, as you can see, and thin it down. So the key to putting a glaze paste on top uh, before any other color application is to have a glaze surface all the way around when you're completely done. So we uh, cover that part where we always wonder and worry about some areas not being glazed and some areas being glazed. So for us to, for order to uh, achieve this all in one shot, we have to put a glaze paste on, on, the, on the surface or there's another method of using the glaze uh, spray at the end of it. Okay, so you can see me um, adding a little bit more of the chroma by the uh, inside of one third and the body one third region to kind of uh, mimic that shade tab that I'm looking at. Okay, and I'm constantly looking at uh, the shade tab in different angles. And I'm constantly not looking at the shade tab because the more you look at the shade tab, the more you concentrate on color, the more your brain is gonna create illusions on you. So here you can see I'm applying uh, translucent smoke to mimic that shade tabs, that acrylic shade tabs in size of one third, uh, very softly. Here you could actually use the brush strokes a little bit, and by using the brush strokes a little bit, uh, not too much, but a little bit of contact on your brush tip to your zirconia part actually helps a little bit to s create that scattering effect, almost like a mammalon effect here. So I take a look one one more time, make sure the correct uh, I got the correct color before uh, I fire. And from here, I would start to apply um, the halo to make all the two colors really come together to become uh, closer to nature, but matching the shade tab at the same time. 
Okay, I used the uh, Halo Spring here because uh, the target shade is on the younger side, which is the A2. And really the beauty of Mio is you could, there's so much freedom in application methods. Uh, like I said for the, from the previous uh, webinar, I wish uh, you guys come up with different techniques and share with all of us. Uh, it will be very interesting and I'll be very excited to see different ways to create uh, a restoration that's close to nature. Okay, so I'm practically done here. Just verifying for the final time, and then I will fire this restoration. Okay, once it's fired, I'm gonna try it on my acrylic dye to have uh, the final uh, shade evaluation. There's a couple of dust particles there on the surface, but I, I'm sure I wiped that down. So you can see with one shot, it could be possible to uh, match your shade tags. So for the production standpoint, this is a very simple and an effective way to uh, hit your uh, target shade. Even when your zirconia part is a little bit off or your lithium disilicate is a little bit off, we could still be very flexible with Neo system. Okay. And then the next video, um, I will, we will practically do almost what's impossible out there uh, to go from a darker shade tab to a brighter shade tab, okay? So here is practically um, what you saw in that video is uh, an introduction of an application method to create and to even push the limitations. And this, using the same technique, using the same movement of the brush strokes, uh, you could see here in this slide that I actually went two shades. So these three shade tests that you see on the left is obviously two shades apart from each other. So from A1 to A3, using the same exact technique, I was able to reach uh, A3 with just translucent A. And go a step beyond, I uh, apply the same method on an OM2 to reach a A3 uh, shade, okay? So the li there is really no limit. Um, I, I hope uh, you guys really push this material and see what's, what's really the limit because I'm, I'm constantly trying to push and push and there's so much freedom that I, I'm very, very excited for all of you guys to start using this product and and share the experience with us, okay? So the next one, like I said, we're gonna go from darker to brighter. So I always start off the same exact way. I treat the surface properly. Uh, I address the shade with the target shade tab that I'm looking at. Um, what I mean by target shade is uh, is the target that I asked for to get this uh, the zirconia part in A1. So I got the A1 zirconia part here, but I always verify with the with the uh, shade tab first, and then I see the change in the phenomena by uh, ap applying these uh, the glaze paste and verify one more time how close uh, the centering is, how how uh, well the zirconia is created, and then I continue on with uh, the target effects that that we're looking for here. Okay. So like you saw before, uh, I'm actually floating the glaze paste on top and you could even see it on the, uh, the reflection of the light. And the zirconia part is practically flawless and, and achieved uh, what I was asking for. But here, let's say the production, we want a brighter shade to an OM3 instead of an A1. Then I will show here how I would apply uh, translucent lumen and mixture with uh, stained uh, snow to create that OM3 shade tab with the darker zirconia part. So as you can see, I'm floating on top more like a paste opaque. So we have to really reset the way we apply any kind of colors with uh, the stain systems, especially with Mio and we 
we use a different application method very close to a paste opaque application. Okay, you could see already it's brightening, and at the same time, we could see what's in underneath the substructure uh, because there's that translucency in, in, the, in the color itself. So we're close, but not quite close. We still see a lot of the orange underneath. And here I'm going to start moving stains around. I'm going to start puddling stains uh, in spots that's lacking. So I saw an orange spot there, so I'm going to uh, puddle a little bit more color and then start to spread the color around evenly. Okay. So if you don't feel uh, comfortable at, to do this all at one shot, you could put a wash, just like an opaque, and then set that and then continue on. But as you get comfortable uh, using the MEO system with the opaque application method, uh, this will be very easily possible and you will see uh, in this video. Okay, I'm just moving color around, I'm just uh, adding some brighter spots that I'm, I'm seeing physically that uh, the substructure is actually coming through. So I'm, I'm going to move the color the way it should look and puddle it the way uh, that I'm looking for. So we're, we're getting very close. <clears throat> and here I'm going to go with the smoke. Of course, even with the bleach color, <clears throat> we still need a little bit of the translucency. And smoke is very subtle and very easy to use, so it's really my go-to. And if we want uh, a more of an intense blue, then Storm is a really nice color to do that. So here I'm adding Halo, but the Halo mixture, I added maybe 10% of stained snow to brighten it, a little bit more opaque, or, uh, the, a little bit adding the opaque uh, color to the lumen and just float on top just like what you saw before, okay, to see that border, that uh, contrast that I created with the smoke and the lumen itself, okay. And we're very close here. I still think there is a little bit of spots that I'm missing and uh, I've adjusted those spots after I took it off before I fired it and this is directly I, after I fired and you can see the luster. Uh, the surface glaze is, is properly glazed. Uh, we got a very even color everywhere. We got a subtle halo going, and at the same time, we have that translucent corners. Okay, and we're very, very close here. So it's possible to go even brighter, and I, I believe this will be a huge advantage for the production. And I think uh, by uh, practicing these methods, uh, the opaque application method with Mio, you will, the more comfortable you get, the more you'll be able to start to push the system uh, to the limits. And I would really love to hear feedback and see some feedback that you guys are actually experiencing with this stuff. So again, I want to show the, the um, really uh, how far we could go with, with this material. So again, it's two shades apart, and I created an A1 very close to ON2. And then I even went with the A3 very close to ON2. So you, we could see and we could imagine how far we could go and uh, just really the sky's the limit. Okay, side-by-side -side comparison. And then, of course, the firing parameters for the one-shot technique. Uh, the one-shot technique is very close to the in-sync glaze firing. Um, I'm not exactly sure if this firing cycle is a little bit different or not, but um, every oven is a little bit different. Uh, the muffles are designed different. Uh, some have two different kind of thermocouples. Some have one. 
So it's really a matter of you guys adjusting your own porcelain oven to create that uh, the glaze uh, that you guys are really looking for. But this is, um, I'm actually firing a little bit higher than, uh, much higher actually than uh, the structure. And this, uh, the reason for this is to create an even high glaze surface with all the colors that you adjusted and into one firing, okay? That's practically uh, everything for today. Um, there will be a webinar, uh, the second technical webinar coming soon, and we will cover a couple of the advanced color application, uh, multiple, multiple color application on a crown with uh, setting the color with one shot, and I will also cover adding, you know, black triangles, corners, contacts, using structure, and also I will share the firing parameters for the structure technique. And if you guys have any uh, questions in, um, about uh, the experience that you guys have after this webinar, uh, we'll talk, we could talk about that on the next one, okay? Well, thank you for um, joining us, and uh, I hope you guys have great results and uh, share with us. Uh, we'll be very, very excited. Thank you. Great. Thank you, James. So we're right on track for the 30 minutes, and now we're going to open it up for Q&A. Um, if anybody joined us late, everybody is on mute as a reminder, and I can you can ask James questions one of two ways. One, you can raise your hand using the hand icon, and I'll unmute your line, and you can speak to him directly. Or you can chat with me. I'm Jen from Presenter in your panel and I can ask any questions to James on your behalf if you don't feel comfortable speaking. So, um, Matt, I just unmuted your line. Do you have a question? Uh, yes, uh, the surface treatment. The surface treatment. Um, there's obviously many ways and there's a lot of theories behind that. Um, I think for me the best uh, surface treatment, the, the protocol is to avoid sandblasting. Uh, I think the sandblast is, uh, it really weakens the zirconia part. So what I do, I just do an ultrasonic and then I apply the glaze paste, a very thin layer of glaze paste and rub it off. Then the surface tension is completely gone. So for me, that's the very best way to do it. Um, if you don't want to go through those paths, then uh, there's a way of steaming the, the zirconia or even um, lightly glass beating the zirconia surface. But I, I am not sure about how uh, the glass bead will affect the zirconia part, to be honest. Thanks, James. Great. I'm going to put you back on mute, but if you have another question, let me know. Um, scrolling through here, um, James, can you please elaborate on the use of the spray glaze that I received? So the spray glaze is another great way to do a one-shot technique. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with the paste floating around in the beginning, uh, I would apply all the colors without any paste, uh, and then once once your color is done, then I would spray glaze it, but we have to avoid from that direct hit from the initial spray. So my initial spray, I spray it to the side and I drag it across a couple times, two, three times, and once you see the surface becoming like an eggshell, then uh, those areas will is covered. So uh, that's the way to do it. Okay, great. Have you used Mio on lithium disilicate? Yes, absolutely. It's exactly the same way. Okay, so everything else is the same then. Um, yep. How does a thick glaze affect the surface texture? Repeat that one more time, Liam. How does a thick glaze affect the surface texture? How does a thick glaze? Uh, uh, oh, thick glaze. Thick, yep. 
Well, whatever you see before you fire, you're going to get it. So if you want extra surface texture, you're going to have to take the next, uh, another step. But if your zirconia part already has texture, already finished, then really you don't have to really worry about that. All the colors that you apply is going to be glazed, and it will be directly on top of whatever surface texture is there. So uh, you, you will get what, whatever you see. Almost sounds like uh, that person is probably looking forward to structure if, yes. if they're looking to build <laughs> surface texture in, which is in the next uh, webinar, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Okay. How long did it take you in total to apply the trans A on crown, on the crown in to the first honest, video game? Uh, yeah, to be honest, that video, um, when I'm filming that video, I have a challenge of looking at the restoration directly, closely enough so that I could evaluate properly. So I'm in a distance, and that video itself was total of five, in between five to six minutes. But if if it's just me in, in a dental chair, and I just ha I don't have a camera, and I have just a crown in front of me, then probably less than three minutes. Okay. Um, here's another question. I added some colors in smoke to an Emacs crown, and it appeared glazed after firing without any actual glaze added. Is that okay? Well, all the colors in the system will, will glaze. So if, uh, so if you don't need to put any glaze paste on top of it, then you don't have to, really. It's the, there's so much freedom here. We created the way it is to bring the freedom to the user. Okay. Um, looking through. Hey, hey we, we've got a question over here. Okay. And, and that, that question is that, um, James, as, as, the, as you apply the material, it, it looks as if the material floats on top of the, the other. Is that, can you explain that? So that's the very unique part of Mio, where you could actually put multiple, multiple colors. In, in these videos that you've seen today, it's, there's only two or three colors. But the next webinar, I will cover multiple colors that include probably anywhere between six to ten colors in, in a single crown. And the beauty of this Mio system is the ability to able to float on top without mixing it. Even if you, I mean, if, if you want to mix them, you can mix them, but it won't mix by itself. And it won't droop by itself. And that's all due to the consistency that we created and straight out of the bottle. So that's why we don't want the user to dilute the colors with any other liquids. Okay. okay. Yeah. Kevin, do you have anything Great. else? Uh, not at this point. Okay. Oh, yep, there is, there is a name. Yep, I got yep. another one. Uh, James, how thick is the material that you applied when you were staining the crown to a darker shade? How, how thick was the material on the surface of the crown? I think I've got that right. Really probably no more than 0.1 millimeter. It's very, very thin. So, and, and the material itself, when, when it fires, it does shrink like any other materials out there a little bit. So even, even thinner. So whatever you see in the video, it's actually amplified because everything was zoomed in very, very much. Uh, some of the dirt and some of the spots I couldn't see with the naked eye anyway. Hmm. So uh, I, I really wish that you guys all try it and then really see what this can do and, and really see the thickness yourself, I think will be uh, a really nice experience for sure. Great. Um. I think I got all the questions on my end. Uh, Kevin, did you have anything you'd like to add for anybody on the line? 
Um, yeah, thanks, Aim. I Again, this is Kevin. I, I just want to say thanks for, for joining us today and thanks for uh, joining us on, on our journey with MEO. It's an exciting time and I've spoken with uh, a number of you as you receive your kits and, and I think the excitement level is palpable and that gets us even more excited about it. And the intent here as we walk through this together is that you, you know, we kind of take these steps together. So now you're going to go try the things that James has shown in production, uh, play with them if you want on, you know, on uh, demo cases if you like, but you can put this into production and kind of get it down. It's going to take a little dialing in maybe with the furnace and whatnot. Your technical representatives by region are, are uh, trained up and ready to help as well with any questions you have. And the, the goal is in the next webinar that we then take that next step into structure and creating more effects like mammalons and decalcification and other subtleties found in nature in our next webinar. So we're going to try to walk through MEO together to help shorten your learning curve and, and get you productive and profitable with it. So I think, Dane, that's, that's it on my side. Great. Well. Thank you again for joining us. Stay tuned for an invite to the next webinar scheduled the week after next. Unfortunately, the timing of Thanksgiving um, made us push it out just a little bit, but we expect to have that um, ready to roll for you the last week of the month. And thanks again for joining us, and I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday next week. Thank you, and have a great Take day. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you.